Hi everyone, welcome to Forensic Examinations 3, The Acquisition. Uh, this video is going to show how to create um, a bit-to-bit -bit copy or a forensic copy of uh, your suspect hard drive or media, whatever it is that you are attempting to make a copy of. Um, we're going to be using the EWF Acquire tool within Helix. All right, Helix is um, an open source, really available CD that is... Um, available from e-fense.com -e -e um, which I discussed in the last video All right. Um, before we do that, I'm just going to set it to boot but before we get into um, that, I just want to show you um, a couple of pictures here of what's known as a write blocker All right. this block here, um, you will connect your forensic computer up to it here via USB, eSATA um, Firewire, and then on this side, you've got your SATA connector, your IDE, and your Molex power connector. All right, um, which is going to connect to your suspect hard drive. All right, there are other blocks available for things like SCSI and USB, but this is uh, this is like I said, it's for SATA, and this is for the IDE stuff. All right. Um, this is in use when you use things like FTK Imager, all right? You will run FTK Imager on, on your forensic workstation and you will have your suspect hard drive connected to that workstation through this write blocker, all right? And it prevents your um, Windows box or any box writing data to your suspect hard drive and thereby tampering with the evidence, changing the data that's on there. Um, just so you know, if you don't, when you connect any hard drive up to a Windows box, it automatically places a recycle bin on that hard drive, all right? It does it automatically. Um, and that's just so that it can keep track of uh, files that you delete on that hard drive, should you ever decide to call them back, you know, assuming you haven't emptied it from your recycle bin, all right? Um, but we're not going to be using that because we're going to be using Helix. Um, which you can download and you can either boot from the CD, okay, it's a nice saw image, so you can either boot from the CD or you can install it. Um, I've installed it as a virtual machine just so I can take you through it, um, but what you can do is boot from the CD by putting it into your suspect uh, computer, all right? Um, before you do that, you'll need to check to make sure that the computer is set that the BIOS is set to boot from CD, that it has that capability and that the CD comes before the hard drive, all right? If you're not sure, uh, open the PC up, disconnect the hard drive or hard drives, depending on how many's in there, uh, boot the computer up without any hard drives connected to it, get into the BIOS um, and check your boot sequence, all right? The, the, the CD or the DVD drive needs to be before the primary, secondary hard drive, it needs to be before them all, all right? Um, I don't know if this still works, but if you run into a BIOS that's password protected, pull the battery off the motherboard, um, give it, you know, 30 seconds and shove it back on. I uh, have had success with that in the past. I haven't had to do it in a long time, so I don't know if it still works, but a bit of useless information if you want it. Um, right, before I show you how to create the acquisition, um, you should know that since the first video, I've actually set up a PC with Windows 7 and mimicked exactly what we did in the first video um, onto a, a proper hard drive rather than a virtual machine. Uh, the reason I've done this is that when I set the original virtual machine up, it was set as a dynamically sized hard drive so that it would grow or shrink depending on how much data was there. This is going to have forensic implications on the drive, okay? It, it means that things are going to move around. They're not going to be where I would expect them to be, so I can't show you. All right, so um, before making this video, just so you know, I've actually already performed an acquisition of this 160 gig hard drive, all right? It took, um, took a couple of hours to do. It does take a while. Um, I'm obviously not going to do a two-hour video because uh, most of it, you'll just be sitting there twiddling your thumbs. Um, I created an acquisition after I deleted those files like we did in the first video but I've also created one before I deleted them so I can show you the difference in the upcoming videos all right it's it's uh, it's quite interesting um, also sorry to, to go on but um, the files that we deleted originally cannot be recovered um, 
and I will go into why it's a, it's an NTFS uh, issue, and I will tell you why in the next video. It, it, it's you might find it interesting. I I did. Okay, so assume now that you've booted into Helix. All right, whether you booted it. Uh, whether you've installed it and you've got your suspect hard drive connected up to it or you've booted into your suspect PC using Helix, alright? So, go to your terminal window. Uh, you will need to um, go in as root, alright? Because we're going to list the drives that are connected. Now, this is just, um, obviously this is my... Uh, virtual box all right uh, like i said i've already created it but what we would do is i've connected a usb drive up to uh the computer all right where i'm going to place a copy of the evidence all right so if i do f this again there it is right so here's my 320 gig external this is where i'm going to place my evidence all right now what you need to do uh, what I would recommend that you do anyway, um, because it might cause you problems down the line um, through questioning by other people, is you should always copy your evidence onto a sterile hard drive. And when I say sterile hard drive, I mean a drive that is either brand new, and you'll need to confirm this, that all the bits are zeroed out. There, there shouldn't be anything on that hard drive whatsoever. All right. There is software that is available. All right, for a price which will claim to forensically wipe your computer, which will blitz everything. You can do it, you can do it for free, and you can do it using DD. All right, I'll give you the command here. All right, it'll be DD, all right, IF equals, which is your input. All right, so this is going to be dev forward slash zero. All right, so what you're telling it now is to write zeros. Okay. Uh, OF is the output, where to write it to, equals dev, sorry, dev, and then you put in, say it was going to be STB, you go STB, you press return, it takes a long time, um, but it will then write zero to every piece of that hard drive, and you will then have a sterile hard drive. If you don't, later down the line, if you get asked, was it a sterile hard drive, and you say no, then some kind of defense is going to come back and say, well, maybe the evidence is contaminated. It won't be, because you'll have a matching MD5 hash. Um, or you should have a matching MD5 hash. Um, and we can show that to them to show that it matches. Okay, so back to your acquisition. Let's clear this up quick. Right, so I told you it was EWF acquire. Okay, all right. Now this piece of software will create uh, a, a, a copy, a bit to bit copy of your suspect hard drive and place it where you want it to go, right? You've got various switches here. Um, you, see, there's your MD5 that I was talking about. You can calculate using uh, a SHA-1 hash, which is uh, even more accurate than your MD5 hash. I can't remember if I said in the last video, but the MD5 hash has been compromised and isn't now um, considered secure by, I think it's the American government, but it's still used in forensics, right? So I wouldn't worry too much about that, all right? So you've got various um, options here, okay? It logs acquiry errors, so if you get read errors, um, you, m you might get read... If you do get read errors, don't worry about it. Some drives will have read errors. They'll have problems on them. Uh, you don't need to worry about that. That's absolutely fine. If, if you start getting massive chunks and data might be going missing, then that might be something that you need to look into. I won't worry too much about it at this point, okay? So we're going to go EWF acquire, um, and we want to create uh, a copy of dev SDA, all right? For example, I'm not going to do it here now. Oh, actually, I'm, I'm going to start to do it, okay? Um... We're going to do... Let me just pause there. Hold on. Right, okay. Um, what I need to do, first of all, is mount the uh, target drive. Okay, so... Uh, I think I already have created one here. Uh, SDB1... Yeah, so if I just mount... Uh, SDB1... SDB1... Alright... And then 
stb1 and there will be amongst other things friends fe2 all right okay so fe2 uh, if i just show you quickly fe2 new deleted all right these are the images that we're going to be working on on the next video all right um this is an image of the hard drive that I took after the files had been deleted, right? And it's split into four, uh, sorry, split into three files. Um, I've told it to limit at 1.4 gig before it splits. So this will be 1.4, this will be 1.4, and this will be, you know, something less than 1.4. And that uh, that is 160 gigs worth of data compressed flat out into three files. And that is what we'll be examining in the next video, okay? So, um, I've mounted my uh, target hard drive, not my target, sorry, my evidential hard drive that I'm going to place my evidence onto. Alright, now if I run EWF Acquire, um, sorry, if I bring up the list of disks again, yeah, I'm going to do EWF Acquire on. Um, now you can either do an acquisition of a partition, you do a partition 1, 2, and 5, or you can do just the actual device itself and that'll do every every bit of that device from start to finish right so we're just going to do sda all right return ewf acquire opens up um and it's asking for the parameters so we want the image path and file name without the extension all right so we are going to create an extent uh create an evidence file in sdb uh, one fe to new deleted and we'll call it new. All right, you can call it whatever you want. It's going to ask for some further details. We're not going to put an extension in because we haven't yet chosen what format it's going into. Next, case number FE3. Description, uh, whatever, test. I mean, you, you can put like, you know, 160 gig hard drive, whatever. Next, evidence number. This is usually applicable just in. Uh, law enforcement, but you can put stuff in here if you want. So if I just put uh, FE3, examiner name is going to be you. Notes, any notes you want to put on the hard drive. Um, so you can put what I tend to put is the make of the hard drive, the model, serial number, um, and the capacity. Um, Saying it's 160. You can also put on the date of manufacture um, if you want. It's up to you. you just, just. Try and put as much information as on, remembering that it might not be you doing the examination later on. It's a fixed drive. Uh, we want to take the physical volume. Compression, best. All right. Best will take the longest, but obviously you'll have the least space taken up. Um, the EWF file format, you've got an EWF Smart FTK. You've got NCASE 1 all the way up to 6. Linen, which is like a Linux based um, NCASE acquisition tool, and then EWFX. The, the automatic one is NCASE 5, that's fine to stick with, that's okay. Uh, the offset to start is 0, alright, because we're going to start right at the beginning, but you can specify anything right up to, you know, like this is 8 gigs worth of data, but when I was doing it, it was 160 gigs, alright. Uh, that's the end of the data that you want to acquire because you can specify what exactly you want to take. Evidential segment file size, all right. It's 1.4 gig by um, default. You can specify it as anything up to 1.9 gig. The idea is you can split it over CDs or DVDs um, and things like that. You know, amount of sectors to read at once. That's how much data it reads in one go before writing it to an evidence file. It's set to 64 as default. Amount of sectors to use as the error granularity. Now this will be, if you hit an error, how far ahead it should skip um, before it starts reading again. So this is 64. Amount of retries when a read error occurs. This It's automatically set to 2, um, but you can tell it, give it 0 and it should just skip on. Uh, wipe sectors on read error. Now, what that will do is it will, where, where it's picking up errors on the drive, it will just zero them out in your evidence. It won't do anything to the drive itself, but on in your evidence files, it will just zero out. Um, I just tell it no for this, because that's what it comes up as default anyway. Um, and here is all the information.
Uh, there's going to be the file name EO1, and then it'll break into EO2, EO3, and so on. Uh, that's the case number. All this data you can put in whatever you want. Um, and then if you hit return, it'll start acquiring it. This should take a while, and it will give you updates as to how much it's acquired and at what speed. This will take this will take a while, so I'm not going to actually sit there and, and go over it. But um, if I just browse to um, SDB1, uh, FE2 new, deleted, and luck, there's new zero, uh, E01 there. That right now is being created. Um, already we've got an update saying it's acquired 81 meg uh, of 8 gig at 4.8 meg a second, uh, completion in 28 minutes and 3 seconds. This will fluctuate, because we're using compression, this will fluctuate as it hits data. All right, so if it comes into a large chunk of data, expect this to get longer, and then as it hits empty spaces of drive, expect it to get shorter. So I wouldn't look at that and say, all right, it'll be done in 28 minutes, because it won't. All right, um, and that's it for this video. All right, uh, give it a go at home. You know, acquire something small. Um, if you've got an old hard drive, try that. Try a USB stick. Um, in the next video, we're going to look at the evidence files that we've acquired from that 160 gig hard drive and we're going to have a look at the information that's on there. Um, I'll probably split it over a couple of videos because it's going to start to get quite in depth. Um, the videos after that then we'll look at various different parts of the operating system and, and artifacts that are left behind. Um, so, uh, thanks for watching. Uh, leave some comments. My email address if you have any questions is uh, right here. Um, feel free to send me any emails and I will respond to you. Um, but please do leave comments, um, I will get back to them and I hope you enjoyed. Take it easy.